Like I always say, Journeys is hot, and our protagonist, Go, has also been on a hot streak. On that streak, he's captured a lot of Pokemon, not to mention he's also gotten to be quite the battler. Out of all his Pokemon though, what are the best ones to put on a team? Today, I put a team of Ghost Pokemon together that I consider to be the best. I'm pretty confident you guys will agree with me, but we will find out soon enough. With that being said, let's get started. Starting off this team is Go Cinderace that he caught as a Scorbunny. Now the reason Cinderace is on this team is simple. He was Go's first Pokemon, and I'd argue he's his strongest. From the get-go, Scorbunny showed its wit, even being able to lead a ragtag group of Nikit to steal food from Ash and Go. Afterwards, it ended up helping the duo save the train from the Snorlax that had Gigantamaxed and covered the train tracks. You also have to recognize the tenacity from Cinderace to keep sticking with its goal to learn a Fire-type move, even after it couldn't really figure out how to use Ember from its mouth, which ended up leading to its evolution into Reboot. As a Reboot, it had tremendous development, showing its kindness as well as its mad dance skills in episode 22 of Pokemon Journeys. Later on, during the battle against Flygon, it showed its ability to adapt and overcome obstacles within a battle, and that was also shown when it managed to learn Blaze Kick while battling Zapdos. Another tenacious moment from this Pokemon was against Kiawe's Turtonator. While it was clearly outclassed in almost every way, it never gave up. During the darkest day, it was able to overcome a clear type of disadvantage against Oleana's Milotic by evolving and learning its signature move Pyro Ball. Cinderace was also shown to have exceptional hearing, as shown in episode 6 of Journeys when it managed to hear a Pidgeotto hiding in a distant tree. Alongside Pyro Ball and Blaze Kick, Cinderace knows Quick Attack which deals some swift damage, and double kick for coverage. Overall, Ghost Cinderace has the experience and the characteristics necessary to be called one of Ghost's strongest Pokemon, and it certainly deserves a slot on this team. Now, of course, Suicune is going to be on the team. Of course, there is a certain debate to be had on whether or not Suicune should even be in contention for this team. But seeing as Go gave it the choice or not to stay with him, and it chose to briefly join his party, I'd say it counts. Admittedly, we haven't seen much of Ghost Suicune, and in the exact episode we saw it in, it kind of looked weak at the beginning. But the reason for this was because of the fact that Suicune had been using a large amount of its energy, purifying the water that the poachers had continuously poisoned. After Go helped heal it back to full strength, it was a formidable Pokemon, easily taking out the poachers. And by virtue of the fact that it is a legendary Pokemon, and Go's only legendary at that, it definitely deserves to be added to his best team. While its only two moves are Hydro Pump and Ice Beam, both of those are shown to be extremely powerful. And whatever its remaining moves are, I have no doubt that they are just as, if not more powerful. Go Scizor is a fierce but caring Pokemon. It isn't afraid to flex its strength, or even use it to protect other Pokemon. While it didn't get the chance to show its battle prowess at the Battle Frontier Flute Cup, it did manage to lead its own rebellious group during episode 23 of Journeys, and it managed to hold its own against Ghost Darmanitan despite the type disadvantage. Much, much later, Go and Scyther challenged the Hall of Chivalry hosted by Wickstrom, along with Ash and Farfetch'd. In this episode, it got some nice development, which eventually ended with Wickstrom offering up a metal coat to go, which allowed him to evolve Scyther in the Scizor. In episode 60 of Journeys, it was shown that it learned X Scissor off screen, which proves that not only did it learn a new move, but that it is training and getting better off screen. Aside from that move, it knows Slash and Air Slash, which are pretty good moves, and not only that, but Swords Dance rounds out its moveset by allowing it to power up even further. Ever since before we caught it, Go's Flygon has been a massive powerhouse. It managed to put almost the entirety of Marvel City out of commission with its Sandstorm attack, and also managed to lure in some of the residents with its song. After Ash and Go caught up to it, this is where we got to see Flygon in action. Of course, we already know that it has an amazing, powerful Sandstorm attack. But aside from that, it was able to utilize its quick thinking to combine Dragon Rush with the surroundings in order to swim through the sand as if it were water. It also has a pretty powerful Dragon Claw and Draco Meteor attack. In the episode where Go fought Zapdos, it proved to be a strong ally and a valued double battler, because it helped out Reboot to be a more useful aerial fighter. Golurk hasn't had much battling experience. He, more or less, just serves as the Guardian who looks over the Cerise Park. But despite the lack of battles, Go's Golurk has proven to be one of his strongest Pokémon. For one, it's straight up huge, and not just because it's a Golurk. It's bigger than most Pokémon of its species, which honestly gives it some additional natural strength anyway. Not only that, but it took four opposing Pokémon, including Ash's extremely overpowered Dragonite, to defeat it, which is a lot more than it would've if it were any weaker. 
Another big tell of this Gulark strength is episode 23 of Journeys. Whenever its seal was broken, it literally managed to cause an entire storm within the Geodome. That's pretty insane. With moves like Hammer Arm and Flash Cannon, it's definitely a fit for Go's best team. The final slot for this best team is tricky, because there's at least three Pokemon that it could possibly be. The first of those being Heracross. While Heracross hasn't had much of any screen time, he has the benefit of being with a trainer previously before Go. Since Go traded one of his pincers for Heracross, he has moves like Arm Thrust, Aerial Ace, Fury Attack, and Megahorn that would definitely prove to be strong moves. And overall, Heracross is a pretty powerful Pokemon, so it definitely could have a chance to be on Go's best team. The second one is Aerodactyl. Again, this Pokemon has barely had any screen time since the episode it was captured in, but in that episode, it was shown to be relatively powerful. Like Heracross, Aerodactyl is a pretty strong Pokemon in general, so definitely could have a chance to join the best team. And with moves like Rock Slide, Dragon Breath, and Iron Head, it would be a formidable foe. The final Pokemon that could take the third slot, and the one I personally believe is best suited for it, is Go's Darmanitan. Much like the other two, Go's Darmanitan hasn't had much screen time, and definitely has had much less battling experience. But my reasoning behind adding him to the best team is because, for one, it managed to be a sort of guardian of the Colossus Ruins for a long time, and it helped out in the raid battle against Golurk. It's also shown to take fondly the stronger Pokemon like Ash's Dragonite, and it's simply just portrayed as a strong Pokemon. Zen Mode also gives it a leg up on the rest, because that ability allows it to turn into a Psychic type, which can prove to be extremely useful for Go's team. Cinderace, Suicune, Scizor, Flygon, Golurk, and Darmanitan. This is Go's best team. You may be asking, how can this possibly be his best team? There's two Fire types and two Ground types. The answer is simple. In the anime, logic works a bit differently. You don't really need coverage like you do in the games. What you do need is a well thought out strategy, and Go has shown to do that on multiple occasions. And with his best team, he would be able to do it again. With that said, that's gonna wrap up this team. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want more anime content like this in the future, let me know down below. Be sure to also leave a like as well. Also be sure to let me know down below if you guys want to see me do any more best teams for Pokemon anime characters. There are a lot of Pokemon anime characters out there that I would love to dive into, but you guys gotta show me which ones you guys want to see. Also, let's see if we can hit 2000 likes on this video. If so, that'll motivate me to do even more of these. Anyways though, I hope you guys did enjoy this kind of content as I really, really love doing it. So with that said, thank you to everyone for watching the video. Huge thanks to my phenomenal team and the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. If you all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, as it really helps us out. I also do other content on my Twitch, where I stream Genshin Impact, Mystic Zora, where I do Pokemon Let's Plays and other gaming content, and of course Mystic Sage, where I do all anime content. Right now, I'm focusing on Inuyasha and Yashihime, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. If you'd like to support me even further than that, check out my Patreon. Whether it's a dollar tip to get early thumbnail access, or the $10 tier to get cool perler bead charms and a shout out. There's tons of reasons to join today. These lovely people did, and I thank them all so much for their support. It really means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrian, and I will see you all next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.